Self-tracking is generally acknowledged to have begun with Benjamin Franklin, who tracked how successful he was in following a list of 13 virtues. Today's adherents take Franklin's method a step further. Using digital tools, trackers are now able to analyze and quantify real data on their behaviors and habits. Christy Rauer is a team leader at Weight Watchers. Since 2007, she's used one of Weight Watchers' founding principles, keeping a log of foods consumed, to help her lose over 120 pounds. I had a paper tracker and I just wrote down everything I ate. I carried that tracker around with me at work and at home. And as, as I ate, ate something, I wrote it down. And it didn't seem hard to me. It didn't seem hard to look up the points values of food. Weight Watchers, a leader in the self-tracking movement, has been using this concept since its founding 50 years ago. In addition to providing emotional support for members via meetings, Weight Watchers ranked food by a point value, allotting members a certain amount based on their height, weight, age, and gender. The point system helped people make sense of their eating habits and gave them guidelines to follow. But not everyone needs a system like Weight Watchers to make major behavioral changes. Jody Weinberger has lost 90 pounds in the past two and a half years by tracking her food intake and later her exercise, using a simple spreadsheet, her blog, and a couple of apps and social networks she accesses on both her computer and her smartphone. I will say that now when I think of how I could change things, it's mm -hmm. always like, what can I quantify, you know? Like when I think about how I would go about doing it, it's like, well, what can I, you know, that is definitely how I think about things. Like, how can I, what can I do right this second that would be towards that goal? Um, it, just became, it became second nature to me and I put it on my phone and I do it on my computer and I calculate uh, calories and recipes and um, I don't know, I love it. It's like a big part of my life. I mean, I was always fat my whole life, um, so it was always like something that was in the back of my head, lose weight, lose weight. I was never really motivated, it was kind of always other people thought I should lose weight. Uh, and then I did a 10 day trip to Israel, and I just had a horrible experience, and I couldn't really keep up with the group, and I was feeling like I couldn't make friends, and it was just kind of holding me back, and that was it. Um, I just had this voice in my head that said, you know, what's the alternative? And the alternative was like living life I hated. I know people look at it as like a little disorder. You know, a lot of people pity me. They're like, you have to track all of your food. But people, they really, they feel bad. Mm -hmm. My reward is that I get to live this way, you know? So like tracking, like that is something I get to do. I care enough about myself that I get to track. Like that's, it's fun. That's how I look at it. So like when I think about life without tracking, I'm like, oh, I don't know. You're spending your energy on something, you know? Might as well spend your energy like doing something good for yourself. Self-tracking, however, isn't limited to these topics, although they are the most popular. John Martin has been keeping a daily log of his life since 2004. His blog is a way for him to remember his life and identify what makes him happy. So I've tracked things on and off throughout my life, but never really thought about it as that. I wanted to have some record of my life because I'm pretty sure at some point I'll get Alzheimer's. I like to write, so it was a way for me to keep my writing going and do some creative writing. And I just thought it might be interesting to be able to look back after several years and see what I had done, what was important to me at the time. And blogging was just becoming the, the rage back then. And so I hopped on that bandwagon and took advantage of it. And so one of the things was looking for affirmations because I named my, my URL of the blog is dailyaffirmations.livejournal.com. The affirmations part was something like I'm generally a very positive person. I thought if I am going to be documenting my life, I'm going to be looking for affirmations because affirmations make us feel good. And I am a believer of the, the notion that the more you look for something, the more you find it and see it. I started looking for those things that are positive that happen in my life. My primary audience is for me. It's something that I want to do. I, I feel like I have to do it. It's very gratifying to me. For these three, tracking helps keep them accountable, both to themselves and to others. But it also gives them a purpose, a way to live their lives. I use my fitness pal to track, but there's so many other things I do on my phone that motivate me every single day. Checking in on Foursquare, you know, competing for mayor at the gym. I make a really great recipe and I post it on Instagram. I, you know, I post a picture, I get a lot of likes, and it's motivating. It motivates me to be healthy. The main thing I've learned is that if you're going to lose weight, then you need to track. You really need to be accountable for what you eat, and, um, and that's, the, that's the biggest thing. The weeks you 
you track everything you eat, you have more success than the weeks that you don't. I do think about it, I think about things a lot more than I used to. I, I think a lot about this notion of documenting your life versus living your life. I mean, I feel like I think most people you would ask or my friends say that I live my life, but I also spend a lot of time documenting it.